when the T cell receptor or TCR or CD3 interacts with its cell bound antigen receptors, co-receptors and signaling molecules cluster into the cholesterol rich lipid rafts of the plasma membrane. Normally, LCK is found associated with CD4 and CD8. LCK is a SRC family tyrosine kinase. The association between LCK and CD4 is particularly close. Antigen induced clustering of receptor co receptor complex brings LCK into the vicinity of membrane associated CD45. CD45 is a tyrosine phosphatase. CD45 removes the inhibitory phosphate group on LCK. Nearby LCK molecules cause reciprocal phosphorylation at their activating tyrosine sites. This phosphorylation then induces LCK to phosphorylate at CD3 ITAM residues. The JDP70 then docks at the phosphorylated tyrosine residues of the CD3 zeta chains. The JDP70 is a tyrosine kinase. The LCK then mediates the phosphorylation of inactive JDP70. Due to this phosphorylation, the inactive JDP70 becomes active. The active JDP70 then phosphorylates LAT and SLP76. SLP76 and LAT are adapter molecules. PLC gamma 1 binds to the LAT. As a result, PLC gamma 1 is localized to the plasma membrane. PLC gamma 1 has SH2 domains. The active JDP70 also phosphorylates PLC gamma 1. PLC gamma 1 is an enzyme important in T cell activation. In T cells, one of the earliest adapter molecule to be incorporated into the signaling complex is LAT. LAT is a transmembrane protein. LAT is associated with lipid rafts in the plasma membrane. After TCR ligation, JDP70 phosphorylates LAT on multiple residues. These phosphorylated residues on LAT provide docking sites for enzymes like PLC gamma 1. Phosphorylated LAT also binds to the adapter protein GADS. GADS is constitutively associated with the SLP76. A kinase called ITK phosphorylates tyrosine on inactive PLC gamma 1. Due to this phosphorylation, the inactive PLC gamma 1 becomes active. PLC gamma 1 breaks down PIP2. As a result, IP3 is released. Means here the active PLC gamma 1 causes the release of calcium. The calcium remains in the cytoplasm. The PIP2 undergoes hydrolysis to create DAG. Means here the active PLC gamma 1 causes the formation of DAG. DAG binds to PKC theta. This leads to the degradation of the inhibitors of NF kappa B. As a result, the inactive NF kappa B becomes active. The active NF kappa B then moves towards nucleus. The phosphorylated LAT also associates with the SH2 domain of GRB2. GRB2 constitutively binds to SOS. 
एस ओ एस इज ए जी एफ और ग्वानाइन न्यूक्लियोटाइड एक्सचेंज फैक्टर एस ओ एस देन फैसिलिटेट्स एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द रास पाथवे डी ए जी ऑल्सो इंड्यूसेस रास रास देन इंड्यूसेस एम ए पी काइनेज कास्केड एन अदर प्रोटीन बाउंड टू एल ए टी इज भी ए भी दी भी ए भी इंड्यूसेस राक और रो और सी डी सी फोर्टी टू दी राक और रो और सी डी सी फोर्टी टू ऑल्सो इंड्यूसेस एम ए पी काइनेज कास्केड एम ए पी काइनेज कास्केड लीड्स टू दी एक्टिवेशन ऑफ दी ट्रांसक्रिप्शन फैक्टर ए पी वन the active ap1 then moves towards nucleus rak or ro or cdc42 induces cytoskeletal reorganization pi3k translocates to the cytoplasmic side of cd28 pi3k then forms pip3 the formation of pip3 induces localization of pdk1 and akt to the plasma membrane akt then induces anti apoptotic proteins bax and bad the bax and bad cause cell survival the calcium ions present in the cytoplasm cause activation of calcineurin as a result NFAT becomes active the active NF kappa B active AP1 and active NFAT then translocate into the nucleus in the nucleus active NFAT active NF kappa B and active AP1 binds to specific regions of DNA as a result of these bindings active nfat active nf kappa b and active ap1 cause gene activation please like subscribe and share